The Madonna of Kiev, also known as Our Lady of Vladimir, is one of the most famous Marian icons in the world. The icon is associated with several Marian apparitions. I recently spoke with Michael Litchens, editor of the Catholic Exchange, to discuss this icon and its relevance today. Well, Michael, welcome. Great to see you. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. If you don't mind, um, could you tell us a little bit more about the history of Madonna of Kiev? Absolutely. Uh, when you hear the name Madonna of Kiev, there's two icons that will come to mind for most historians. One is uh, called Our Lady Oranta, or of Orans, and she is made of mosaic pieces from the 11th century in the St. Sophia Cathedral in Kiev, which was uh, built act just after the time of St. Vladimir the Great, who's kind of the great founder and saint of the Eastern Orthodox Church in the Slavic lands. Uh, but the one that has been talked about a lot is sometimes called Our Lady of Vladimir. That icon was another miraculous one that had been in Kiev since at least the 12th century. And she was considered the protect, like the mosaic one, Our Lady of Iran. She is considered a protectress of Kiev, a protectress of the Slavic people in that region. Uh, unfortunately, she was taken to the city of Vladimir sometime in the 14th century, and it is now in a gallery in Moscow, but is still considered the most sacred icon in Russian Orthodoxy, besides maybe Our Lady of Kazan. Uh, she is still a miraculous piece. She will still uh, gets devotion, despite that she's in a museum and a gallery. She still has plenty of pilgrims that come to visit her, and she is still conducting miracles to this day. Uh, to a point where people, when they have visions of Mary in Ukraine, even up to the 20th century, they will often time, sometimes say she is just like Our Lady of Vladimir, or in the West, we might call her Our Lady of Tenderness. And you mentioned those apparitions. Can you maybe talk about some of the different stories of people Absolutely. seeing Our Lady? Uh, the major ones, probably the ones that still defy the imagination, happened in 1987, a year to the day after the Chernobyl explosion, uh, when, if you were living in Ukraine at the time, you thought, not only is this feeling like the end of the world, what the greatest nuclear accident in history is happening, uh, the Russian government was refusing, the Soviet government, I should say, was refusing to tell anyone anything, and most people had to learn it from Western sources because the Russian government did not want anyone to know about this major accident that happened just north of Kiev, the capital city. Uh, Chernobyl hit the news recently because that was one of the first things that the army was taking in its invasion of Ukraine. But when those uh, apparitions started, there was even an attempt to say this is just radiation. We're seeing a silver aura in an old, closed-down Orthodox church in the town of Pushiv. But people kept showing up. The KGB attempted to install roadblocks, use militias to stop people from going. This wasn't an unknown practice with Marian apparitions and the Soviets. But among the things Mary did once she started speaking, especially to two visionaries, one by the name of Joseph Turelia, who was a prisoner of the Gulag until about a year before that time, was warning them that Russia needed to be converted, as she had asked us to do at Fatima. She also was warning them that Russia's aggression would come again and that they would face a major invasion, something that seemed bizarre when the Soviet Union was collapsing a couple years after that apparition, but it's been coming back to people's minds more and more lately. Um, maybe can we talk about how, you know, Madonna of Kiev is able to maybe bring two sides together? And that's exactly one of the hopes is, is that uh, the Russians and Ukrainians are in many ways they're a distinct people, they're a distinct group of Slavic people, but from the different imaginations of different historians, they've often been interrelated people. Uh, Gorbachev, for example, is the son of a Russian father and a Ukrainian mother, and he didn't see them as that distinct, per se. But in terms of religion, they have shared a similar spirituality. The mother city of the Orthodox Church among the Slavs is Kiev. That is where St. Vladimir came back after receiving his baptism and conducted a mass baptism of the people in the Dnipia River. And uh, Vladimir Putin is called Kiev the mother of all Russian cities, mostly because of this religious patrimony. So they both worship the same icon. They still have great devotion to what's now called Our Lady of Vladimir, previously Our Lady of Kiev. 
and many pilgrims of both the Russian and Ukrainian Orthodox Church and even the Ukrainian Catholic Church still conduct pilgrimages to Hushriv and also to the remaining Madonna of Kiev inside St. Sophia's. So there is hope that Mary, as a mother to all of us, can bring peace where very few have been able to succeed in doing so. Uh, Michael, I'm wondering, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us uh, about Madonna of Kiev that we haven't talked about? Absolutely. Just to show you that this isn't just a weirdo Catholic and his obsession with artwork here. Uh, the former First Lady, Yokoshenko, has been encouraging people to carry around an image of a Madonna of Kiev and to devote themselves, to consecrate themselves even, if doing so, while the people of Ukraine are bravely defending their homeland. So I think it's great that all Americans, if you can find this image, you might know her as Our Lady of Tenderness in the West. She is a mother to all of the Slavic people out there, and I think she is a great one that we can pray to and keep her image in our hearts. Absolutely. And Michael, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us about all of this. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure. God love you all.